for either team, hopefully, if they can get that today. One of the things that stood out to me with the starting lineups is how much bigger we are than the pilots. We'll see if that is to our advantage or not. And the tip is uh, bounced around, and finally Jordan Widener comes up with it. So the Wildcats will get the first possession here. Derek Troyer on the right side. Over to Patrick Hopkins, back out to Martin. And we're going to get... Uh, we're going to get a foul right off the bat against the center, uh, Patrick Edding. That is his first, team first. So the Wildcats will uh, inbound the ball. Jordan Widener, and nothing but net. An excellent way to begin this game this afternoon. It's going to be big if we can get Jordan Widener going early. If he gets hot, he can be very dangerous. Ball is tossed over to Booker. He drives in the lane, nice lofted shot. The ball comes back out to Troyer, who was double teamed initially. He pulls up, takes a shot at the free throw line, no good. And it's gonna go, uh, what are they, well they're gonna call it, they're gonna call a foul on uh, Number 33, oh no, actually on uh, number 30, Aaron Martin, that is his first. It's gonna be interesting to see how the refs call this game. Uh, IW has the size advantage uh, from the outset with Patrick Hopkins underneath. We'll see if they call it physical or not. Ward bringing the ball up, inbounding to getting it to Gerber. It's tipped away, or not a really good pass. George Jones bringing it down the court. Troyer now setting things up for the Wildcats. He drives, kicks it out to Martin. Back to Widener. Wildcats are really getting good uh, ball movement here very early this afternoon, something that has been uh, kind of missing uh, even in their victories. Troy are setting things up and then looking to drive. We're gonna get another foul. This comes a perfect time to show, talk about the uh, power shooting for the Wildcats. It's really been their nemesis all season, 63% on the season, and a couple games that were uh, quite a bit less than that, 33% against Taylor on Tuesday night, which really cost them that three-point game. As we mentioned in the opening, Patrick Hopkins, who's going to the line right now, was one for seven from the free throw line against Taylor. And he also uh, off to a good start, one and one. That foul, by the way, was committed by number four, Stephen Ward. That is his first. Hopkins, second shot, no good. And now Ward will bring the ball up for the Pilots. Booker trying to drive against Troyer. Troyer does a good job of keeping men out. Ward from the three-point land, and it's good. Stephen Ward. Troyer going hard into the lane, kicked out to Widener, three point, it's good. Good confidence booster again there for Widener, five quick points for the sophomore. Booker now setting up the offense for the Pilots. Again, he's trying to drive in on Troyer. Troyer doing a very good job. However, it looks like he's gonna pick up the foul. He does, that is his first. Ward just simply got a good step on him and mm. As did number 22, Zach Miller on the inbound pass. IW clearly not set on that possession and it cost him. Patrick Hopkins out, kicking it out to Martin, back into Hopkins. Troyer off for three points, good! Chase, I think we've gotta be encouraged at the energy in which the Wildcats are playing their offense. Exactly. I haven't seen this since mm -hmm. November. Hopefully a rejuvenated bunch, if they can get it working around the perimeter and of course dump it down inside to Hopkins, they can be very effective. But of course those two three-pointers already uh, certainly help the cause. Booker driving in again on, uh, this time on Widener and he gets the basket. Game is all tied. A Little over three minutes has gone by in this game. Troyer kicking it out to Jones, into Hopkins. He's immediately double teamed. He kicks it out to Widener for three. Just off short a little bit. 
Rebound like the, by Gerbner, Gerber rather. Looks like the pilots are going to let the Wildcats uh, shoot some of these three three pointers. They've really been uh, laying off their man to man. Wildcats getting ready to substitute. Heading out at the top of the key, handing off to Ward. Troyer on him, he shoots a three. Not anywhere close, must have been tipped by Troyer. Jones driving in, and he is gonna pick up the basket and the foul. Basket is good by George Jones the fourth. And that is Eddie's second foul. And so uh, Coach Lightfoot for the Pilots immediately uh, substitutes for him. So editing will editing will take the bench and Mislin, number 25, sophomore 6'8 out of Indy. He comes in and takes his place. For the Wildcats, we now have uh, Taylor Schoen and DJ Bettinger. And Jones completes the three-point play. Ward now bringing the buck. A little bit of light full court press, nothing real significant, enough to uh, make it a little tougher for them. Gerber thinking about shooting, hands off to Miller. Gets it back to Booker. He drives. We're getting to see that uh, number 15, Landon Booker, likes to drive right straight down the middle of the lane. And he saw the uh, younger defender on him, DJ Bettinger, just in the game, a freshman, uh, took advantage of that and drove it to the hoop. Bettinger now. Getting into Hopkins, who throws it out to Widener. He went, Widener was wanting to get it to Jones, and Jones had continued moving towards the basket, and uh, Widener was just a little off balance. There's the arena, 15-33 remaining in the first half. Wildcats have a one-point lead over the visiting Bethel College Pilots. And an incredibly fast-paced, high-energy game, but the good news is not sloppy. Exactly, a lot of back and forth play. Uh, IW pounding it inside, but uh, uncharacteristically, uh, both teams only average 36% from three, but they've both knocked down a couple. Gerber immediately uh, double teamed, and the refs say he walked. So there's our first turnover of the game. Taylor showing uh, inbounding the ball to DJ Bettinger, who brings the ball up. Setting things up, Patrick Hopkins top of the key. He's double teamed and he will be fouled. Double foul on Stephen Ward. And Stephen Ward, that is his second foul. So the Pilots have a couple of guys that, uh, only two guys who have committed fouls and both of them have two fouls so they are on the bench. Ward out and Gerber out for the Pilots. And Patrick Hopkins out now for the uh, Wildcats. Parker Stauffer in his place. Coach Tonegal doing a good job of uh, going to his bench, getting his guys rested. And Chase, I would think that's one of the advantages that we have is we've got a pretty deep bench. Mm -hmm. Parker especially nice to have down there, another man under the basket. Jones shot no good, rebound by Stauffer, and he puts the basket up and good. Zach Miller coming around the side. It looks like he's going to get fouled by by number 24, Parker Stoffer. So we've talked about the depth of the bench. Parker got a basket and now his first foul for the Wildcats. Just talking to Parker yesterday, one of those players that had to sit out last year, the medical red shirt, got hurt early on with the ACL injury. But boy, it's, he's sure glad to be back there and kind of has a new found appreciation for being out there on the court, really taking advantage of every game and every minute out there. Matt Schaus had the ball there. He is the second leading scorer for the Pilots, Miller being their leading scorer. And a nice inbound pass, or inside pass to Cody Cochran. That pass from uh, Booker. Parker Stoffer immediately double teamed on the inside, and it worked because uh, he threw the ball away for a turnover. Schaus over to Miller. Miller for three, and it bounced around and dropped. Miller, not only their leading scorer, but also I think he's a leading uh, three-point shooter on this mm -hmm. team. Just a freshman, but averages 12 points a game for the Pilots. DJ Bettinger throwing it over to George Jones, who will get a little hype mismatch over there. Booker on Jones. Widener for a shot. It bounces around. No good. The ball is kicked around. And the Wildcats come up with it. I was about ready to say the Pilots, but uh, great job of pursuing that ball. 
Parker Stauffer decides to take a long shot from the outside. No good. Rebound by Jones. And he does a great inside move. With Brandon Gerber on the bench there, uh, certainly taking advantage was George Jones. Schaus over to Booker. Back to Schaus. Inside to Cochran. And... And that ball, a uh, throw by Schaus, so that was a bad throw, but it was tipped. So 20 seconds left on the shot clock, and the Pilots will uh, get to keep the ball. Number 20, Matt Schaus, will be inbounding for the Pilots. Nice pass to Cochran, but they're going to call it off. And that foul is called on Aaron Martin, number 30. That is his second. So he takes the seat, and uh, David Peters comes in. Cochran did a nice job of sealing his man, getting position, and uh, Aaron Martin had to foul in order to prevent a basket. He has to sit on the bench now. Schaus now being guarded by number 32, Zach Vandewater. And that foul is called on number 32, Zach Vandewater. That is his first, team fifth. Schaus throwing it in, getting it to number 25, Michael Nislin. Booker against DJ Benger. Air ball, rebounded by the Wildcats. Booker, though, providing a little bit of a problem for Bettinger as he brings the ball down. Derek Troyer now back in for the Wildcats. Over to Peters. Back to Bettinger. Troyer with a nice jump shot. Just a little strong, no good. Rebound by number 25, Mislin. Schaus thinking about going up for it. Bettinger doesn't fall for that fake. Booker takes a long three, and it's good. Landon Booker, three point. Getting the ball into Stauffer. Nice basket. Stauffer. IWU going to take advantage down underneath with Parker Stauffer. Pretty small lineup for the Pilots. Mislin taking a step, but uh, not called for traveling. Troyer coming up with the ball. Right now, Troyer the only starting Wildcat in for the Wildcats. Troyer dribbling to his right. Mm. And we are going to have a foul go against number 24, Parker Stauffer. Parker Stauffer. So just like that, we have at least uh, two of the Wildcats with two fouls. So Stauffer takes a seat, as does DJ Bettinger. Patrick Hopkins back in. George Jones back in. A lot of pick and roll game with Derek Troyer and Parker Stauffer on the wing there. That time Parker got called for that foul, but See if IWE looks to take a little different offensive scheme now with uh, Jones and Hopkins back in the game. Number 23, Nick Lewis in for the Pilots. Boy, the refs are calling this game close. So many times these MCC games turn into physical bouts and uh, we'll see uh, how, the, how the refs gauge this throughout the game. A lot of times maybe they'll feel it out, call a couple fouls early just to settle them down, but you know, throughout the game we'll see how that carries on. That foul was called on Zach Vandewater. That's his second. Team seventh. So uh, Pilots go to the line for a one-on-one. -on -one. Schaus misses that. Rebound by the Wildcats. David Peters specifically is the one that came up with it. Pilots now showing a little bit of full court pressure. George Jones driving and it drops. No foul called. Mislin looked at the ref like, come on, <laughs> call something. The ref shook his head no. Schaus now bringing the ball up. Misselin trying to set a pick. Schaus, however, decides to stay to his left. He tosses it. Uh, Miller tosses it. A bad pass intercepted by the Wildcats. Widener, beautiful. Wow. I think by the time he let go of that ball, he was behind the basket. Acrobatic play there for Jordan Weiner. Hangs up in the air and just flips it up with the right hand, gets it to go. He's so good at hanging in the air. It seems like he's up there for a couple of seconds. That foul, finish. that foul was called to number 22, Zach Miller. That is his first. That's the team fifth. 
Jordan Winder now going to the line to complete a three-point play. Here's that play again. Peters with a nice bounce pass. Winder just kind of hanging up there. <laughs> and Jordan makes his free throw for a nice three-point play. Back to live action now. More full-court full pressure on the part of the Wildcats. We haven't seen a ton of full-court pressure on the uh, Wildcats part this season, but uh, we're seeing a little bit early here this afternoon. Stephen Ward now back in for the Pilots. Looks like IW in a little bit of a soft 3-2 zone, maybe still guarding their men a little bit, but still staying in that Six, formation. Five, they let the shot clock get all the way down to four seconds before Stephen Ward fired that long three. It's no good. Troyer driving all the way to the lane, kicks it out to Widener for three. No good. And unfortunately, George Jones is going to get called uh, with the foul as they uh, went to rebound. George was just beat on the position. And one of those things that I'm sure he'd love to take back. <laughs> So number 20, Matt Schaus going to the line. We're in the bonus, so it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Schaus is a decent free throw shooter. He is not their best free throw shooter, but uh, nevertheless, he, uh, he has done well as he, again, we mentioned he's the second leading scorer for this team. He actually leads this team in assists, averaging a little over three assists per game. Good playmaker. George Jones, a one on one situation against number 32, Daryl Hopkins. Doesn't make the basket, but he gets fouled. And that is Hopkins first. That's why I'm not sure why the Pilots are still doing that full court. IWU able to break that you know, more times than not. And I think that's why the Wildcats don't do full court pressure themselves you know, more often just because it simply doesn't pay off a lot at the college level. All these players can get have their head up and pass the ball, put it on the floor. Uh, IWU you know, takes advantage there with George Jones. George misses his first free throw. He'll get one more because he was fouled in the act of shooting. 9.55 remaining in the first half, 23-21 Wildcats. And George leaves both free throw shots short. Kind of looked in the two chase that when he shot that second one, he pushed it a little bit more, but it still ended <laughs> up short. Yeah, didn't have any knees on it. Lewis uh, coming around and he gets across the half court line. He gets it to Ward, guarded by Widener. Ward acting like he always wants to go up for a long three, but he wisely pulls it down. Schaus now, 4-3, bounces, no good, rebound by Ward. He thought about going up against Patrick Hopkins and thought better of it. Now back into Hopkins for the Pilots. And uh, we're going to get a foul on number four, Stephen Ward. And that is his third foul. That is uh, not a good position to be in with, with uh, nine minutes left in the first half. A little too over-aggressive. Patrick Hopkins saw it from afar, and he got his feet set outside of the semicircle underneath the basket. And uh, we've got to call that every time if your feet are set. DJ Bettinger in, replacing uh, David Peters. We now have the starting five, with the exception of uh, Bettinger, on the floor. Aaron Martin is on the bench with two fouls. Still a little bit of full court pressure, nothing real serious as Troyer brings the ball up, going against Lewis. He drives, lifts it, no good. Rebound by Schaus. And now we're going to get a, a foul on the Wildcats. Hey, just straight this. Straight this. IW has to be careful. They're going to, Pilots are going to shoot one and one. From here on out, actually, they're going to shoot double bonus yeah. after this next foul. So uh, one and one here, but from now on out, a lot of free throws will be shot here in the last nine minutes of play. Number 23, Nick Lewis, the freshman guard from Fort Wayne, 5'10". Uh, he looks like a little guy out there on the field, on the court, but uh, he gets to go to the line and shoot two. First basket is good. Actually, that was still one on one. The pace has remained the same. We haven't had as much scoring here in about the last minute and a half. 
and Lewis makes both. Nice looking free throws. And Lewis immediately gets on tight on Troyer, who's just taking his time. Little smile on Troyer's face, I think he's having fun. And Lewis does a nice job of uh, batting the ball away. I think Troyer just took his eyes uh, off of things for a second. Jones uh, getting ready to inbound the ball. Gets it into Troyer, 22 seconds on the shot clock. You see Lewis trying to get in Troyer's head. Freshman on a senior, really trying to be a pest to him. And he's uh, done a great job of sticking with his man so far. I suspect that's part of the reason why Troyer had a little smile on his face. <laughs> well, okay, foul, Patrick, Hopkins. Patrick Hopkins charged with the foul. That's his first. Lewis now bringing the ball up for the Pilots. Gets the ball to Booker. Bettinger guarding him closely. Booker driving, kicking it to Hopkins. Back out to Lewis for a three point and he gets it. Takes, takes a little foul, a fall, hoping for a foul. Jordan Widener for three, and it's good. Big shot for Widener, 11 points now in the afternoon for the sophomore. Widener, of course, leading scorer the other night in our loss to Taylor, scoring 19. So he's having another great uh, mm -hmm. afternoon. Almost uh, stolen by the Wildcats, but uh, number 24, Gerber gets the ball, hits a nice jumper. Seems that every time IW tries to take momentum, Pilots come right back and they take a two-point lead. And now there's a turnover. A steal on the part of the Pilots. Lewis driving to the basket. Patrick mm. Hopkins getting in good position and he's not happy with being called on that foul. Uh, we'll to see if we get a chance to look at that. Welcome back to Lucky Arena. I'm Mark Perry. Joining me this afternoon, Chase Evans. We're glad to be bringing you this exciting MCC action. It has been a... Uh, a really high-paced first half. Uh, in the last couple of minutes, however, the scoring has slowed a little bit. However, the Pilots have done a nice job, and they now have a two-point lead. And uh, Lewis, number 23, Nick Lewis, uh, will be going to the free throw line and shooting two. He misses the first. Lewis providing a spark off the bench, just a freshman, five points, uh, really providing problems for Derek Troyer as well on defense. Lewis just, uh, I'm not sure totally what that was about. I think he had some tape on mm -hmm. his finger or something. And he went ahead and removed it and just brought the tape over to the side. Here's his second free throw, and it's uh, also no good. He was two for two the last time he went to the line, and now this time 0 oh and 2. Widener bringing the ball up for the Wildcats. Parker Stauffer in for Patrick Hopkins. Widener out there, George Jones out there, Bettinger and Troyer. Wildcats will uh, keep the ball. That must have, oh no, I guess there was a foul on that play. Oh uh, no, perhaps not, it just went out of bounds. And uh, they were just double checking the shot clock, so the shot clock has been reset to 16 seconds. That's what the call was. Troyer now bringing the ball in. Lewis guarding him. George Jones setting a little bit of a pick. Eight, seven, eight seconds left in the shot clock. Trying to get it inside to Stauffer, and he got fouled. That foul was committed by number 12, Cody Cochran. That's his first. Cochran, the sophomore guard, 6'3", from Bluffton, Indiana. This is something Patrick's been working on a lot as well. Free throws, we'll see if he can knock down the first in this one and one. And he does. One point game now. 
it has been rare at home uh, so far this season to see the Wildcats get much beyond about a five or a six point lead. Mm -hmm. That may be they part like of the issue <laughs> the, this season, but uh, a week ago, Wildcats were up by 15 right as the half was concluding. Nick Lewis was charged uh, with the charge and the foul. That's his first. That'll be a player control foul, so no free throws will be assessed. Nine team fouls now for the Pilots. Jordan Widener getting ready to inbound the ball for the Wildcats, heading off to Troyer. He's guarded closely by Booker. Troyer getting it to Bettinger, who gets it into Stauffer. Mm. Stauffer immediately wants to go outside. However, Schaus uh, deflected it, and another turnover. Booker driving, baseline, nice shot, that's good. You see what happens when Patrick Hopkins is not underneath for the Wildcats. More experience underneath, Parker doing a nice job, but uh, they're really doubling down on him, and that's causing a lot of problems for the sophomore. And it's not at all unusual for the Wildcats to get it onto the inside and then immediately toss it back out, and they anticipated mm. it. Air ball by Widener. However, the ball will uh, went out on the Pilots, so the Wildcats will be bringing the ball in. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Not a whole lot of time for the Wildcats, but plenty of time for them to do something. They go four across on the baseline. Oh, George Jones not ready for that one. Was talking to his teammates, and Jordan Widener passing the ball. Costly turnover there. And Coach Tonico rightly calls a timeout <laughs> when you've got one of your starting five falling asleep on the court. 51. So the Pilots now will bring the ball up. They've got a three-point advantage. Miller now back in the game for the Pilots. He's been quiet this afternoon. Schaus pull up jumper baseline and what a nice shot. <laughs> Biggest lead for the Pilots at five. And uh, I'm afraid the Wildcats have uh, gone into one of their lulls here where there's just not a whole lot of scoring. And consequently, there's also a certain amount of sloppiness that's uh, happening. We talked about that before the game, how they just go through stretches where it seems like they can't put together a full 40 minutes. At the game. And starting at this game, they came out strong, got a nice little lead, but still, little points like in the last couple minutes have uh, really put them down at five-point deficit. Parker Stoffer trying to drive under the basket is stopped. Ball is kicking around. Bettinger comes up with it. He's got to watch out. There's guys coming behind them. George Jones, turnaround jumper. He will get fouled by number 12. Cody Cochran, that is his second. Boy, they are really pressuring the guards for IWU. Every time it gets swung around, DJ Bettinger has, and George Jones, Jordan Widener, they all got about two, three guys swarming on them. I think they're gonna really let P Parker Stopper get underneath and then swarm him. It's just a lot of defensive pressure and it's really causing IWU problems. You can see George uh, driving and uh, a little bit of a fall away jumper and uh, that angle didn't really show the foul too well. George Jones now having missed three and four. Ooh. He's just leaving everything short. Yeah. Not entirely sure uh, what is going on in his thinking as it relates, because those are four mm -hmm. free throws that all four have been short. Not, not even a chance there. Erase those from your memory, though, if you're George Jones. Miller driving in, number 12, showing in on guarding him. Booker for three. Oh, he just drops that. So we're on a pretty significant run here for the Pilots. DJ Bettinger uh, driving around to his left. And now the Wildcats set up their offense. Jordan Weiner for three. He gets it. A much needed basket at this point in the game. That's 14 for Jordan. Schaus uh, almost lost it. Hopkins now driving. He doesn't make the basket, but he will get fouled and go through the free throw line. That foul is charged, will be charged number 12. Taylor showing that is his first. 
Looks like Patrick Hopkins and Zach Vandewater will re-enter this game. Uh, I don't think Coach Tonico can uh, afford to have Hopkins out of the game any longer. These last four and a half, he was hoping he could keep him out, but I believe Patrick has two fouls. So we're going to see what happens there. That's clearly a blocking foul, not able to get the feet set there. Daryl Hopkins for Bethel, shooting now his second. A little unorthodox uh, free throw shooting style. He misses both. Young man's got some good height, but uh, having trouble this afternoon getting the, the bucket to, uh, getting the ball to drop. Chase, it looks to me like now that Bethel is just out hustling the Wildcats, mm -hmm. and it's not surprising they have a five point advantage. On both ends of the floor, it seems like two or three guys, like I said, are on them. That means one person has to be open, like DJ Bettinger from three in the corner. He was left wide open and had plenty of time to make that shot. And so nice job, DJ Bettinger, dropping the three mm -hmm. for the Wildcats. That extra pass will be huge here. IWU just has to keep on rotating it around the perimeter. Schaus now coming to the left side. Same shot he made then, same result. Can't let him do that. He loves to go to his left there and pull up baseline jumper. George Jones. Boy, George is just not... Uh, getting those things to drop. Miller handing off to Schaus. Schaus, long three. Oh, way off. He should stick to that uh, left-handed, uh, along the left-handed <laughs> baseline. Vandewater almost losing the ball. He's able to retain control, gets it to Hopkins. Now to DJ Bettinger to set up this offense to Widener on the right. Bettinger, another three. Oh, it bounces in and out. Hopkins with the rebound. Oh. It misses. Hopkins gets the ball. He goes up and he will get fouled. This foul is called at number 24, Brandon Gerber. That is his first. So, Hopkins, who is one for two from the free throw line today, will now go. I'll tell you who's developed a whole lot already this season. is DJ Bettinger, the freshman already from November. I mean, he's getting some decent playing time, but now really the sixth or seventh man, uh, first or second guy off the bench. Hopkins not able to finish there, but DJ really a, a difference maker, especially when Derek Troyer, uh, he's had some injuries on and off this season, needs a break every now and then. I think that's really going to be key for IWU in these next couple MCC games. And at least in the home game so far this season, we have not seen Bettinger with the opportunity to shoot three like, like he's had this afternoon. They're leaving, they're giving him the shot. Well, Hopkins makes his second. So he is now uh, two for four. Schaus bringing the ball up, tossing it over to Miller. Miller to Booker. Miller, long three-point, and it makes it. They are killing us on the three-pointers this afternoon. Unlimited range for many of these pilots. George Jones now on the right-hand side. He drives into the center. Turn around. Holds. Very nice. George Jones for George, just keep shooting. It'll come. Gerber dribbling out over to his right. Gives it to Miller on Jones. Miller. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. Oh, oh. And I don't know if that was uh, acting. There was definitely contact. And Miller makes the three, and he will go to the free throw line. Really a lot of acting, like you said there, Mark, at the end of the play. He really sold it, though. You got to give him credit for that. Heck of a shot there for Miller, but man, they're just throwing in shots from all around the arc. Here we can see this replay. He goes up. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that, was, that was good <laughs> acting. Oh, my. That was excellent acting on his part, but he got this. He might be enrolled in the drama class at Bethel, you think? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Theater minor. So, nice four-point play for the Pilots, which uh, now makes the uh, gap eight points. Full court pressure, Widener coming down to Jones. He puts it on the floor. Cannot get that shot, but it goes nice. in. I think that was showing that uh, tipped that in. 2.14 remaining in this half. Schaus on the right-hand side, guarded by Jones. He's trying to drive in on him. Oh, and a nice block by George Jones. I sure hope they, uh, yeah, no foul on there. <laughs> just a nice, clean yeah. block. Finally, right? So, 23 seconds left on the shot clock. Schaus will be inbounding the ball for the Pilots. 
number 21, Taylor Kolbus now in for the Pilots. Gerber is guarded by Hopkins out of the point. Gerber looks like he has nice uh, ball handling moves. Miller takes Ooh. the shot, and then uh, Widener just kind of uh, standing there, and the Pilots get the ball back. Gerber with, Gerber with the rebound. He puts it up, and he will get fouled. Costly mistake there for Widener. It's so easy to do, but he just waited on the ball instead of going after it. It's one of those things you always coach and preach to your teammates and uh, players. You got to go after that ball. Be aggressive. Don't let it come to you. And Gerber uh, takes advantage there on the rebound, putting it up for two. See the replay. Oh, and, and I got to tell you, that was called on Patrick Hopkins. And it looked to me from that position that he had the position and wasn't moving. But uh, that is his third foul. So uh, we're not going to see Patrick for a while. He'll probably see him at the beginning of the hmm. second half. But yeah. three fouls, not a good position That's for the, our big guy. Yep. Parker Stoffer now in in his place. Gerber missing uh, his free throw shots. DJ Bettinger back in. He's going to bring the ball up. No pressure this time. Tossing over to George Jones. Out to Widener. Showing. And the refs have stopped the play. And there is a foul. Number 21, Taylor Colbus. That is his first. And Parker Stoffer will go to the line and shoot two. A minute and a half remaining in this first half. We desperately need both of these free throws to drop. And the first one does. The foul trouble going to be an issue in the second half. 20 plus fouls called here so far. And that's going to come into play late in the second. Second free throw, also good. Perhaps, Chase, I ought to say that uh, more often, that these <laughs> baskets are, are critical to drop, huh? I guess so. Parker will take that. Still a four-point lead for the Pilots to see if IWU can cut that, uh, maybe get a tie before, before halftime. The lead was as big as eight just a little bit ago, and so the uh, Wildcats have done a good job of uh, cutting it in half. Booker, long three, bounces in and out. No good. Vandewater bringing down the rebound. He brings the ball up to the front court. Pretty Jordan. small lineup for IWU out there right now. It really is. DJ Bettinger tossing it over to Jones, to Widener. Part of the reason the ball movement on the part of the Wildcats hasn't been as good is because the Pilots have just done a very nice job on defense. George Jones triple teamed. No foul call, Vanderwater getting the ball. He takes a shot and he does get fouled. Well, their ball pressure is just second to none this game. I mean, I don't, I don't know what Coach Lightfoot was telling them before the game, but that was really a key for them to be in this game uh, and contend with these Wildcats, who, of course, uh, top 15 team ranked in the NAIA's. Bethel not ranked, but uh, when you got that conference games and you got that intensity on both ends of the floor, it's, it's hard to beat. Anything can happen. Vandewater now getting to shoot uh, two. He makes the first. So you can see how he got the ball under the basket, got them up in the air, and then uh, took the shot. So uh, nice job on the part of Vandewater to get uh, Colbus off his feet. The, the gap now is three, 47.8 seconds remaining. Vandewater takes his second shot. It misses, bounces, rebounded by Bethel. Schaus now bringing it up, pushing up the tempo of the ball, giving it to Booker. Booker tries to drive in, but is stopped by Bettinger. Gerber trying to set some things up a little bit. Now back to Booker. About a 12-second difference on the shot clock. Booker stops, shoots, no good. And the ball is going to go the Wildcat way with a foul on number 24, Brandon Gerber. That is his second. So, yeah. Vandewater's going to get to go through the free throw line again. Good opportunity to cut it to one here with the clock stopped, and uh, looks like the, the Pilots will probably take the last shot here if IWU can clamp down and play some defense and hopefully get a one-point halftime deficit. So, Vandewater's first shot strong. Into the Pilots, number 23, Nick Lewis. 
you know, I, I, I think the coaches for the Wildcats are kind of beside themselves. They're shooting, uh, from what I understand, lots of free throws in practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, come game time, we're just not getting them to drop. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't always correlate for whatever reason. Uh, if you can shoot them in practice, maybe just can't get them to drop in the game. Good rebound here, but hold for the last shot. Maybe not. And we're going to have just like that. Let's see who they're going to go. Oh, they're going to say it went out on the Wildcats. So, 20 seconds remaining in this half. Man. The Pilots will uh, retain possession. Schaus going to inbounds. You know, and it, that kind of a turnover uh, against the, uh, for the Wildcats, it's just a sloppy play. Mm -hmm. It's a momentary uh, brain freeze. Unforced turnovers cost them. Down to five seconds, Lewis driving, he misses. And I don't think there's gonna be enough time to get a shot off. Widener though, three quarters of the court, and no good. So at half, it's a three point ball game. Uh, decided to just uh, take it easy, tune us in this afternoon, and we've got a great second half of basketball. Ward now back in the game for the Pilots. And uh, Coach Little, Littlefoot, uh, or Lightfoot, rather, he's he's taking a timeout. You know, three seconds in, you don't, uh, well, you don't his, see that often. Well, his entire team was not back on the court. So uh, number 41, Patrick Edding, who uh, sat for much of the first half, he just, uh, once the team had called the timeout, he just walked back onto wow. the court. So uh, not to mention the fact that uh, the entire team got onto the court with only about a minute left exactly. in the halftime. So. Unless he was receiving some medical attention. I'm not sure. He, I don't think I've ever seen that, Mark. I have not <laughs> call a timeout because your teammate, teammate's still back in the well, locker room. So Edding is in the game now. So uh, I, I wasn't even really paying attention to see who they had in his place. But now he's out there. And the second half resumes. Miller now getting the ball over to Edding. And uh, Booker driving. He goes up against Jordan Widener. And Widener was moving. So the basket is going to count. And right off the bat, the fouls continue. Jordan Widener picks up his second foul. Booker will go to the line to uh, get an opportunity to make three points on this play. Not the way the Wildcats want to start this second half. So the, the lead is uh, six on the part of Bethel. Derek Troyer now, first possession for the Wildcats. He brings the ball up. Hands it off to Widener, who gets it to George Jones. We'll see if the uh, ball movement here in the second half can be as good as it was at the beginning of the game. And so far, kind of things are, are slowing down a little bit. Widener pulls up. He does a little bit of an acting job, uh, or maybe he was off balance, but no foul, as well as no basket. Steven Ward now with three fouls. Back in the game, directing uh, offense for the Pilots. Aaron Martin stepping in in front of the ball in front of Gerber, gets the ball, a nice turnover for the Wildcats. Troyer though needs to be careful. Booker was behind him. Aaron Martin for three, a little long. Patrick Hopkins also in the game, he's got yeah, three be fouls. Very careful if you're Patrick Hopkins, three fouls as well as on the other end, uh, three fouls for Steven Ward as we mentioned. Uh, also Edding with two, Gerber two, Cochran two, and Kolbus with two for, for Bethel. So they, I mean, a lot of these guys have to be careful, if, especially if it goes to, down to the wire, which I feel like it will be. An extra session it could be uh, limited players out there. And with the poor free throw shooting on the part of both teams, it doesn't seem to be that much of an advantage to go to the free throw <laughs> exactly. line at this point. Might as well play him straight up. Miller now standing there getting things set up, waiting for Booker to get into place, or actually Ward rather. Ward back to Miller, now to Booker. Big pass all the way over to the right-hand side. Ward guarded by Jones. It goes off of Ward's foot. And a turnover that benefits the Wildcats. See if the Wildcats can uh, really get a half-court set and they can get it down low, maybe kick it out for a three-pointer. But I think we really need to set uh, Patrick Hopkins down there. Really need to get him involved. Troyer now dribbling over to the right-hand side, giving it to Widener. Over to the left side to Jones. Aaron Martin, and here goes Patrick Hopkins on the inside, and he gets fouled and picks up the basket. And that is going to be charged to Patrick Edding, number 41. That is his third. So the two big guys, both with three fouls. Hopkins for the Wildcats, Edding for the Pilots. Let's see if Patrick can make that drop, and he does. Nice free throw. 
Five points for Patrick. He averages about 13 and a half, so see if he can get him more in this game. Booker driving, and Patrick had to just let up, but Booker missed it anyway, but now we have a turnover. Ward tossing over to Booker, who wanted the shot. He pulls back, gives it to Gerber. Gerber drives, and this is the disadvantage with the fouls on Patrick. There's not much he can do. Almost have to take a basket instead of picking up that fourth personal. Jordan Widener now bringing it up for the Wildcats. Into Patrick Hopkins. He tosses over, not the best of pass. Derek Troyer picks it up, and it's going to be charged with over and back. Troyer arguing that uh, it was touched by Bethel, and I think he's got val validity to his argument. But the refs didn't see it that way, so a turnover for the Wildcats. Hopkins takes a seat. Patrick Stauffer coming in. Edding now getting ready to inbound the ball for the Pilots. He gets it over to Ward. So far early in this second half, none of the full court pressure that we saw from either team in the first half. Edding guarded by Stauffer on the left-hand side. Miller dribbling around. He gets it over to Gerber. Gerber's driving to the middle, guarded by Martin. Miller, I'm going to tell you what, he takes the shot, gets fouled. He is uh, very adept at... Uh, he just create his own shot. I mean, it, and flying get, into get in people. Get crevices and, you know... But he also, sell it. you know, we saw him, yeah, he sells his, yeah. the, the fouls that he gets, uh, that are on him, he sells them well, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. And creates them. So Miller makes his first free throw. And he's about a 91, 92% free throw shooter. So we definitely do not want to foul mm -hmm. him. I think that's where he gets a lot of his points, averaging 12 or 13 points a game uh, as a freshman, as shooting that from the, the charity stripe is he's huge. Jordan Widener driving in the lane, kicks it out to Troyer, into Stoffer, who spins around. Nice move to the basket, and he gets fouled. Stephen Ward, number four, is uh, charged with a foul. That is his fourth foul, so no doubt, uh, in fact, Schaus is uh, there getting ready to come in, so Ward will take a seat and Schaus will come in. Stauffer now with his uh, free throw, and he makes it. Here's a replay of that. Stauffer coming around. He beats Edding, and then uh, mm. Ward comes up on the front side and uh, tries to slap the ball away and is charged with a foul. That's a huge call. Might have been a little iffy. It looks like he had a lot of ball, but a little contact on that, and he'll have to sit for most of this second. And Parker, nice job. That's got to be huge for him to knock those down because I think they've got to make him earn his baskets underneath there. So far in the second half, Wildcats much better at the free throw line than what we saw in the first half. Booker now breaking the full court press into Edding over Martin. Edding shot, no good. Rebound by Stauffer. Troyer pushing it on the way back. He drives to the lane. Left-handed layup, good. Bad pass by the Pilots, intercepted by Martin to get to Troyer. Troyer's got a free shot. He gets over to Widener, no mm. good. Stauffer with the rebound, he gets fouled. I don't think Widener would have picked up the three on that, but uh, that foul is uh, charge number 20, Matt Schaus. I think Widener's one uh, foot was just mm. on the line. It was a heck of a look there for Troyer, though, to find him on the wing. Though His head's always up. He's certainly a playmaker in the open court. Three-point gap now for the Wildcats. Let's see if Stauffer can drop these. Misses the first. In the Pilots lineup, number 32, Daryl Hopkins. And you can see a lot how... A of arm on that one. Yeah, Shouse, that was an obvious one. Edding out, Daryl Hopkins in for him. And here comes Stauffer's second free throw attempt. And he makes it. So he is two for three from the free throw line here in the second half, which is a great way to start. Ten points there for Parker Stauffer. Or three for four, rather, not two for three, three for four. Booker on the left-hand side to get into Daryl Hopkins. Mm. Oh, and he... My goodness. Nice basket for him. Parker Stauffer is going to be charged with the foul. That is his third. Chase, I don't think we've uh, seen this this season, but uh, 
I'm not sure what Coach Tonegal's plan would be if we lose. But and welcome back to Lucky Arena. 53-49 the score. Bethel with a four-point lead. 15-57 remaining in the game. Wildcats uh, have looked a bit better here early in the second half. However, not able to close that gap. Daryl Hopkins for the Pilots coming to the line. This will be for a three-point play. He made the basket uh, under the basket and was fouled by Stauffer. And he makes the, makes the shot. So a nice three-point play for the Pilots. Derek Troyer bringing the ball up. Handing off to George Jones. Jones into Stauffer. They immediately double-team him back out to Jones. Jordan Weiner driving in the lane, pull-up jumper, good. Jordan Weiner, two. So good at that pull-up, 10-footer, 16 points now for sophomore Jordan Weiner. Schaus bringing the ball up for the Pilots. Passes over to Miller on the right-hand side. Miller is taking his time, looking to see who he can get it to. He gets it over to Booker. Booker taking it slowly into Gerber. They try to get it into Daryl Hopkins. Taken away by Stauffer. George Jones now coming the other way for the Wildcats. Troyer getting set, but then driving. And he has a nice layup over Miller. Strong move over the freshman. Derek Troyer just puts his head down and off glass, two-point basket. So just like that, now the gap is only one. It has been a while that the Wildcats have been in the lead. So if we can get a stop on this possession, Gerber with the shot, no good. Rebounded by Stauffer, who gets it over to Troyer. Troyer bringing the ball up. Troyer pull up jumper, no good, little long. And taken away by Troyer, who goes back to the basket, and he makes it. And now for the first time in a long time, the Wildcats have a one-point advantage. Miller and Widener making some contact. No basket. The basket is called off. It was a good call. Calling it on the floor. So many times you see that continuation. It's almost like an NBA call where they get fouled at the top of the, of the, of the arc or by the, by the foul line. And then they called it on the floor. That was a good call by the referee there. That foul was charged number 44, Jordan Widener. That is his third. It's the Wildcats fourth. Pilots now will inbound the ball. Matt Schaus getting ready to bring it in for Bethel. He tosses it way out to Booker, out uh, close to the half court line. Booker driving in on Troyer. Troyer lets him go by. He goes up against Patrick Hopkins. The basket drops. Booker trying to steal the ball against uh, Troyer, and I think he's going to be charged with the foul. That is his first in all this fouling. It's always surprising when you find somebody that's gone this long without a foul. Both teams now with four team fouls. Zach Vandewater in for the Wildcats. He brings the ball in, gets it to Troyer, who now is uh, dribbling over to his right side to get things set up. George Jones watching uh, over things, seeing which way things are going to be set up defensively. He drives in. Dumps it off to Vanderwater, who makes the basket and gets fouled. Side of you just took their time there, got it down. Troyer got down to George Jones, who just, George does a great job of uh, having his head up and really seeing the whole floor. Saw back Zach Vanderwater under the basket and able to up and under for two. And a little contact. We'll see if there was much contact here. Ah, grazed his head. On the head. Cochran is charged with a foul. That is his third. Both teams uh, picking up a lot of fouls this afternoon. Vandewater now going to the line to make this a three-point play. Mm. And it's good. Some good minutes from Zach Vandewater, freshman. So now the Wildcats up two as Matt Schaus brings the ball for the Pilots, handing off to Booker. Booker driving on Bettinger. Bettinger kind of cuts him off. Tosses it out to Cochran, who gets that two-point shot to drop. We got to give it to Bethel. They've been knocking down shots, difficult shots. Running, runners in the lane and knocking down the open jumpers. Uh, you got to give them credit for that. DJ Bettinger seeing an open lane kind of uh, bobbles the ball, so the ball comes back out. Vanderwater out to Hopkins. 20 seconds remaining in the shot clock. 
Widener for three, no good. Bettinger, nice hustle over there, but doesn't quite get it. Cochran bringing the ball up, cans it off to Booker. Miller, three points, and it's no good. Rebounded by Jones. Both teams gone cold at the last couple possessions. Widener now getting the ball into Patrick Hopkins. Tries to dish it to uh, Jones as he's coming down the lane, but it's intercepted. Pilots continue to do a great job of doubling down on defense when we get the ball into the inside to our big men. Schaus driving around on Vandewater. Nice turnaround jumper. Good example of one of those tough shots. That's eight points there for Schaus. And just like that, the Pilots have opened up a two-point lead on the Wildcats. Four-point swing. Into Patrick Hopkins before they have a chance to triple down on him. He kicks it out to Benger. He just holds on a little too long. Well, I'll tell you, Chase, every time we go into the inside, there are three pilots like immediate a swarm of a swarm of bees around them. It just seems like they can't elude them. And, you know, get away from one and they just another one's there. You gotta think someone's gotta be open though, Mark. I mean, rotate it around. We, like we saw in the first part of that half, first half. They really worked the ball around, got some nice shots, but now they're just clamping down and they can't get the open man. The numbers are such that if you can put three defensive guys on one offensive guy, there's <laughs> got to be a couple people open. <laughs> just <laughs> numbers, exactly. That foul, by the way, was charged number 15, Landon Booker, his second. They have six team fouls, one away from the bonus. David Peters, wide open three. Yeah, he makes that. He gives a fist bump, David Peters. First three points for him. He's really uh, kind of struggled in games with his shots, but uh, that was a great confidence builder for him. Schaus now bringing the ball. Wildcats up by one. Edding back in for Bethel. Booker trying to drive as he's been doing. David Peters doing a great job of shutting him down. Tosses it over to Edding, who takes a shot. No good. Rebounded. It went out, out. I thought there for a second Patrick Hopkins got it, but it went out, uh, out of bounds on the Pilots. In for the Wildcats, number 24, Parker Stauffer. Stauffer now in for the Wildcats. Patrick Hopkins coming in, playing about a, oh, a minute or two, and then he mm -hmm. takes, the, takes the bench. If you've just tuned in, Patrick Hopkins uh, with three fouls on the afternoon. Immediately doubling down on... Stoffer not as fast that time as they have other times. Troyer for three, bounces around, no good. Bethel rebounding, however, two guys do it. So the ball comes loose and Vandewater comes up with it. Troyer, once again, pull up jumper. Yes, this time more in his range. And now the Wildcats have a three point lead. Nice job by Vandewater, not forcing the issue when he got that loose ball and gets it to Troyer for the easy two. Miller for three, no good. He, uh, he's kind of gone a little cold here in this second half. David Peters coming down with it. He hands it off to Troyer. Troyer dribbling around, Stoffer, but they cut off the lane. Back out to Troyer as he set things up. Pick set by Stoffer. He goes on the inside. And I think uh, he got fouled. And the foul was committed by number 12, Cody Cochran. That is his fourth. That's the team's seventh foul, so now Troyer will go mm -hmm. to the line, though he would have gone to the line anyway, but uh, we are now in the bonus situation. And the Bethel Pilots call a timeout. Uh, Coach Lightfoot might lead. They have uh, battled back here in this second half at Lucky Arena. Uh, they were down four uh, at halftime and have come back uh, and are doing a nice job here in this second half. Actually down three at halftime. Derek Troyer going to the line to shoot two. He was fouled right before that timeout. And he makes the first. Better free throw uh, display here for the Wildcats in the second half as well, Mark. And uh, there from that angle, you can see clearly that he was, uh, he was fouled by Cochran. And he makes both. So the free throw shooting is better in the second half and the overall shooting is better. No surprise then that we have a five point lead. The real key is gonna be whether the Wildcats can keep this intensity up the rest of the game. They've had their uh, moments of lull and uh, that has been their undoing in two thirds of the way through this season. 
David Peters charged with the foul. Matt Schaus will now be going to the free throw line. Referee still keeping that whistle in hand, very ready throughout this game. 12 fouls combined in a second. We saw 20 plus in the first half, so a lot of these players are getting in foul trouble. We're gonna see a replay. Just a lot of fouls that uh, maybe could go either way. Maybe some no calls would be warranted, but uh, that's how they're gonna call it. They've been pretty consistent if they're gonna call it. Uh, most likely there's some contact there. They're gonna They really have been consistent call. this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Schaus averaging 12 points a game. He now has uh, 10. DJ Bettinger getting to the ball to Derek Troyer to Patrick Hopkins, who's back in. Bettinger for three, and it's good. His second three-pointer of the game. Nick Lewis in for the Pilots, number 23. He hands it off to Schaus, who's guarded a little bit of a mismatch, but David Peters, nice job of getting in there and getting that pass. Handing off to Troyer. We have a little bit of a smaller lineup with our guards out on the edges. Mm -hmm. Bettinger, Peters, and Troyer, but Patrick Hopkins is in with three fouls. Ball is in there, too. And now here's David Peters for three. No good. He made one earlier. Rebound by Gerber. Gerber getting it to Schaus. David Peters picking him up. Miller back to Schaus. And Nick Lewis having a great first half. Nice pass into Daryl Hopkins. He gets fouled. A foul by number 10, David Peters. That is his second. That is the team's sixth. Pilots continue to attack the basket. Uh, there with Hopkins, uh, it seems like IWU on the other end, Patrick Hopkins, uh, really still hasn't got involved as much as we would like underneath. Maybe he's still uh, worried about those three fouls, but uh, really kind of hampers his play on both ends of the floor, it seems like. And here it comes. At, boy, I got to tell you, that looked like nothing but uh, the ball, but nevertheless, he was called for the foul. Daryl Hopkins misses his first. And then uh, after that first free throw, Stephen Ward, number four, with four fouls, he has come in for the Pilots. Hopkins makes his second. Zach Vandewater now in for the Wildcats. He gets the ball to Jordan Widener, who uh, had been on the bench taking a rest, and now Widener comes in and bringing the ball up for the Wildcats. Patrick Hopkins setting a pick at the point. Jordan Widener going to shoot, nice. but there was George Jones underneath the basket. One of the biggest leads of the afternoon, if not the biggest for IWU at seven points. Schaus uh, trying to drive baseline. Ball tapped out of bounds by Vandewater. Chase, earlier we were talking about the fact that when uh, on the Wildcats had the ball on offense and uh, Bethel was doubling and tripling down, we weren't finding a way to break it, but it seems like mm -hmm. we've started to do a uh, much better eye on the whole court and seeing things and getting balls to the open Just guy. Just half court sets and uh, people get in position. Nick Lewis with three over Patrick Hopkins. He really had to launch that, and that was good. Patrick Hopkins, and no. we're gonna call that an offensive charge. That'll be Patrick's fourth foul. That's, you can see the displeasure on Hopkins there. I, I guess you, you gotta say they're consistent because they're calling about every single contact out there. And, Boy, Tonegal does not like that. Here's the replay of this, and he... Uh, I don't even know what they're calling for that. No, he, they were doubling, even... doubling down on him, and he went to pass the ball, and that's uh, that's where they they said he made the... Uh, he, which, I, yeah. Clearing I, I, out, I mean, I don't get that either. clearing out foul, but he wasn't even going up for a shot. Nice tip away from uh, Troyer from Stephen Ward takes it the rest of the way. Oh, he went out. He was uh, he was uh, not out of bounds when he inbound that pass, so uh, costly mistake. They don't usually call that a whole lot, but they caught it that time. Big turnover, benefiting the Wildcats. Coach Tonigo calls a timeout. 7.50 remaining in this game. Indiana Wesleyan 72, Bethel 66. And uh, just like that, we have seen a pretty big momentum. More than six or seven point lead for IW the whole game. We'll see if uh, they can uh, keep it closer if they'll come back. Jordan Widener, nice wide open, followed by uh, Nick Lewis, and all Lewis could do was uh, foul on that play. That is only his second. And uh, given how many fouls we're getting in this game, only having two is, uh, is pretty good. <laughs> 
So Jordan Widener going to the to the line and uh, first one rings in and out. You can see this is how it occurred. He had a nice wide open uh, uh, lane to the basket on that inbounds play and he makes the second. Widener, one of the most consistent players, I think, for the Wildcats on both ends of the floor. Really shows up when they need it most, 17 points this afternoon. Lewis for three. No foul on the play. So Derek Troyer brings the ball up very quickly. Tosses it to Vanderwater. Really a nice pass to him, but unfortunately Vanderwater was, uh, didn't stop, and so he's charged with the travel. We saw a bit of the acting by Lewis again on that last possession for the Pilots. Uh, I think the referees, they've seen enough of that this afternoon. They're going to let him play, I think, when it comes to that. I think you're right. Lewis now guarded by Widener out on the right-hand side. He brings it back to the center on top of the key, then tosses it over to Booker. Daryl Hopkins on the inside wanting the ball. They get it to him. He goes up. Stauffer does a nice job of blocking the shot, but then stepping out of bounds and the ball will remain with the Pilots. Though the refs are conferring, so we'll see uh, what this is about. See if his foot touched the line on. Oh, I don't, he wasn't. Well, and I think that may be why they are conferring, though that one is gonna be awfully close. It may just, oh, actually what they're discussing is how much time is left on the shot clock not whether or not we get the possession. I see why Parker was a little frustrated. I wasn't sure if it was clearly that replay showed that he was, I thought he was still in bounds. It was really close. So the refs continue to confer as to what to do on this. And the ball is gonna stay with the pilots. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Nick Lewis trying to get the ball into Booker. Instead he goes way out to Daryl Hopkins. Now back to Booker. Booker setting things up with seven seconds remaining in the shot clock. Now four. It's gonna be a last second. It's gonna be an air ball, so it is going to be a turnover and the Wildcats will get the ball. Critical possession here for IWU. Seven point lead. Let's see if they can extend that and maybe uh, really get some positive momentum and maybe put this game in their grasps, oh. but. Ah, I'm not sure who Van Vanderwater was getting the ball to, but uh, again, a breakdown of concentration. Man. You can't be doing that at this point in the game. This is where we have to continue to really keep the intensity high and put this game away. Instead, the ball comes back to Bethel, into Gerber who turns around and he's gonna get fouled by Vanderwater. I really don't know what they're calling there for Vandewater. Hands straight up, maybe a little body contact, but you could call, I believe you could call a foul every time down the floor if that was the case. But you hate to get on the refs too much, but man, they've had some calls this, this afternoon. Vandewater charged with his third foul. Gerber misses his first free throw. Uh, maybe he was a little up, but he had, his hands were straight up. He had a little. And I, I think he made contact with yeah. Gerber's arm. So Aaron Martin back in. Parker Stauffer still uh, doing great job here in the second half in place of uh, Patrick Hopkins. George Jones with the rebound. So we come out away from that possession and we can uh, all sigh collectively because no points scored by Bethel. Widener now on the right-hand side over to Martin. Martin had a very quiet afternoon today. Derek Troyer guarded closely. He pulls it back, gives it to Martin, into Stauffer, into Martin, drives the lane. No good, it's short. In fact, uh, Martin has uh, no points on the afternoon whatsoever. Yeah, that's what I mean. I've been surprised that he's not been much of an impact on this game. Maybe he's had sort of a shooting slump, but I mean, he hasn't really had a whole lot of shot attempts this game. Yeah, that's true. All right, the Wildcats retain possession. Troyer going to be inbounding it. He gets it to Widener. Widener shooting off just a little bit, ball Ooh. to the left. Hopkins is, or excuse me, Widener, really in pain on the other end. Is he cramping up or did he get stepped on? Looks like it's some sort of a cramp. So he's still playing on, give him credit. Schaus uh, getting a nice uh, basket, but he doesn't make it. 
So it's coming back. What a sloppy play at this point for both teams. Stauffer, oh, very nice shot for him just in front of the free throw line. So nine point game and the Bethel Pilots, so they're gonna call timeout. Their coach lead, and it's not because they've gone on some incredible run. It's just been a really hard fought game for Grind both teams. Mm -hmm. The Pilots bringing the ball in, Edding. And oh, that's a close one. That's Patrick Hopkins going up against him, and the foul is going to go against Edding. See the Bethel coaching staff besides himself. Uh, they, they thought he was inside the circle when he set that charge, and uh, he might have had a pretty good argument there, but had his feet set, so they gave him the call. That's Edding's fourth foul. Full court pressure now. David Peters getting the ball. He just needs to bring it over the half court line, and no problem for the Wildcats. Derek Troyer driving to the right-hand side. Booker uh, following close behind him. He tips the ball out of bounds. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Troyer gets the ball to uh, Patrick Hopkins. He's able to get it, hands off to Peters. Back to Troyer, 15 seconds now on the shot clock as they set up their offense. 10 seconds on the shot clock. George Jones over to Peters to Aaron Martin, five seconds. Ball is bobbled, Hopkins, long three-pointer, no good. Rebound by Schaus. Schaus drives up, guarded closely by Troyer. Hands off to Cochran, straight through the lane, nice basket. Aggressive play by Cochran, four fouls for him, but he still plays intense on both ends of the floor, pays off there for the two-point basket. Troyer setting things up, tossing it over to Jones, to Martin. Be nice to see Martin hit a couple of threes right about now. Troy are setting things up. 15 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Now he drives, gets it to Martin. Oh, Martin thought about a three. He should have pulled the trigger. Long three-pointer by Jones. Rebound by Peters. His last two offensive possessions have not been good. Coach Tom going to any kind of uh, waiting around. They've just got to keep going full speed, which is what has gotten them to this point with uh, now a uh, seven-point game. Derek Troyer now bringing the ball up. And the Wildcats moving into their offense. Patrick Hopkins immediately triple-teamed. And they get the ball, Cochran puts the ball up, Edding follows through like it's coached. Five point game for the Pilots. So whatever the Wildcats were doing to break that uh, doubling and triple teaming, they gotta go back to that. Hopkins and Martin providing, uh, being each other's worst enemy. Edding going up and not sure what the ref was calling there. I don't think there's any uh, foul. I think he was just wanting to make sure nobody was injured. That totally takes the fast break away from the Wildcats, which is really unfortunate. Wow. No fouls. Nobody stepped out of bounds. Aye. Just a uh, Bethel player down and the ref's uh, stopping action and making hmm. sure that he was okay. So Jordan Winder. Handing it back to Troyer. Troyer guarded by Booker. And now with three and a half minutes left in the game, over to George Jones, who's got a clear lane. He drives, and I think that's going to be it on number 41, Edding, if that's who they call it on. And that yep. is, in fact, who they call it on. So that is it for number 41, the freshman or the sophomore forward from Fort Wayne. That is his fifth foul. And he got two points on the afternoon. Been a rough afternoon for the young sophomore. Still had some good quality defensive minutes, though. He played a, you know, a heck of a game on that end of the floor, but uh, tough going for Patrick Edding. Number 25, Michael Misslin. He's uh, the 6'8 uh, sophomore from Indy. He takes his place. George Jones is at the line. George has been what? short all afternoon. You can see here is George going to the basket. Definite contact made on the part of Eddie. George now getting ready to shoot his second free throw. Needs to put some power on it. Still That's leaves six. it short. That's six short free throws for George. 
something that you would think that you could fix relatively easily. Just, you know, bend your knees a little more, put a little more on it. But I Miller, don't know. Miller guarded by Jones, hands off to Mislin. Schaus, uh, who's been running the offense for quite a bit of the afternoon, he and Booker. He tosses it over to Mislin. Booker is in. And now he sets a pick for Schaus, who hands off to Miller. Miller drives to the basket, has a nice drive. I don't think he expected to be such an easy drive, and he was just a little off with his shot. They retain possession, so Schaus gets it into Mislin. Over to Booker on Peters. Booker behind the uh, back shot. Doesn't make it, and it is going to be a foul against number 25, Michael Mislin. That is Mislin's third. And uh, because we're in the double bonus, Wildcats will go to the line. Specifically, it'll be Patrick Hopkins. You got to give credit for, to Patrick this second half. Uh, only picking up one foul so far in about 17, or, yeah, 17 minutes of play in this second half. And it's so crucial. He, it makes such a difference when he's out there on the court. Uh, if he can make his free throws, that is. Bethel is calling a timeout in between uh, free throw shots. Maybe to Patrick's arena, Mark Perry, Chase Evans, calling this game through this afternoon. Wildcats have the ball. A two-point lead and 2-12 remaining in the game. Aaron Martin now back in for the Wildcats. Jordan Weiner driving around the left-hand side baseline. Get the ball into Patrick Hopkins. Turns around, it drops. Extremely important basket for the Wildcats. Schaus now, number 20 for Bethel, bringing the ball up. Troyer guarding him closely, keeping a hand on him. Schaus likes driving baseline and having that baseline jumper. Oh, nice pass to Miller. Cochran watching, the lane goes wide open and Miller drives the lane. The game is still two with a minute 34 remaining. Troyer now taking his time. Out to Jordan Widener. Wildcats, though, have got to keep playing their game, high energy. Widener trying to drive, they got two people. Pull up oh, jumper, hits wow. top of the basket, or the backboard, not a good shot. It's not Patrick a, calling for it, he didn't get it. Not a good possession at all for the Wildcats. Booker driving the lane, George Jones had the position, oh, but unfortunately, that call is gonna go against the Wildcats. Booker makes the basket and George Jones gets called with a foul. That's his third. Thankfully not on Patrick there, but still three for Jones now. And obviously this can, more importantly, this can put them up one. He was moving, so good call on the part of the refs. Booker now goes to the free throw line to shoot his free throw to make it a three point play. He's successful. Aaron Martin now will bring the ball in. Troyer gets it. No full court pressure. Booker hanging back just to keep uh, Troyer honest. Under a minute left in the game. Wildcats down by one. They get the ball into out to Martin. Martin drives. Who are they going to call this on? The refs are conferring. And they're going to call it. They're going to say the foul goes against the Pilots on number 25, Michael Mislin. That is his fourth. Aaron Martin will go to the line. Martin hasn't a single point this afternoon. This is uh, an important basket with 51 seconds remaining in the game and the Wildcats down by one. He makes it game tied. David Peters now coming in. There he sees. You see why Bethel has a pretty good case of why he was set clearly outside the circle, and boy, they hold, they held that up, and both sides of the both fans and both teams and benches were a little confused there. It took about five, ten seconds for them to call that. Taylor showing in for the Wildcats. He hasn't seen a ton of playing time this afternoon, but he's in for Hopkins on defense, and Vandewater checks in for Martin also on defense. Wildcats have one point lead, 51 seconds remaining. Troyer providing a little bit of pressure here against Schaus. Schaus dribbling, kicks it over to Mislin, back to Schaus. Schaus guarded by Troyer, it's tipped away. Oh, and Vandewater almost comes up with it, but he loses it. Basket, no good. Troyer 
getting the rebound, getting it over to David Peters. And there's going to be a timeout called by Coach Tonegal. Jordan Widener in, DJ Bettinger in, Derek Troyer in, and George Jones. So none of the big men. None. These are all exactly. uh, what I would assume to be good free throw shooters. So let's keep uh, the ball out of George's hands. He's had a rough afternoon at the free throw line. The turnover will be huge here for Bethel because obviously no big man on the other end. Troyer gets it into Widener. They're not fouling Widener. Oh, no. Bad pass by Widener, and Booker gets it. 16 exactly. seconds remaining. Booker pulls out. They're going to go for the last shot. Schaus for three, and he drops it. He drops it. Ten seconds left. Huge shot for Bethel. The Wildcats will have one last shot. Bettinger getting across. He walks, but they didn't call it. Schaus gets it. They're going to call a foul finally. I'm afraid that's going to do it here this afternoon for the Wildcats. Wow. What a turn of events, Mark. I, I, I knew if it was going to be a turnover, it was going to be a huge disadvantage on the other end because IWU, look how small their lineup is. It turns out Shouse pulls up for a nearly wide open three ball, gets it to go, and it was just chaos on the other end. IWU did not know what if, to do. If we come back to the inbounds, Widener had it, and it was just great defense on oh Cochran's God. part. He jumped at the right time and blocked it. You just got to hand it to uh, the pilots this afternoon. Their defense has just been outstanding. Schaus misses his first free throw, which encourages the student section. Now we're bringing in the big men. Patrick Hopkins coming in for the Wildcats. Coach Tonigo looks like he wanted a timeout. Uh, not going to get it at this moment. 2.9 seconds remaining. It's a two-point game. And Weiner trying to get, uh, get some instructions from Tonigo, and so... Uh, the refs now are talking, uh, trying to determine uh, what exactly uh, Coach Tonegal is wanting to call. And now uh, Schaus getting ready to uh, shoot his second free throw attempt. Really a big basket for Schaus. Make this a three point game. And he makes it. So Martin uh, looking to bring the ball in to Troyer. Got to have a three point shot. And wow, wow, I... So we're gonna back it up here with Shao shooting the free throw. And so Aaron Martin bringing the ball back in. Timeout looks like 1.5. Can you back it up just a little bit there, guys? And bring it forward. And the refs are watching right there. 1.5. Chase is arguing for 1. <laughs> refs have determined it's going to be 1.2 seconds. And thanks a lot to the guys in the control room. Great work here. Always provide some interesting moments when the refs come over and want to see the replay. Well, that's, a, that's a big difference there, point four to one point. Well, and that's Good. enough now to to, uh, to throw it in and uh, hopefully get off a decent three-point shot, tie this game, and go into overtime. However, Bethel is wanting a timeout, and they'll get it. So <laughs> 1.2 seconds remaining in this. To at least get the ball in bounce. All right, Troy are getting set and ready to bring the ball in bounds. Number 25, Matt Mislin. He's standing there, a big height advantage over Troyer. They get the ball over to Jordan. Widener, he fires, and it is just short. 